So I don't know about you, but I have had a lot of friends and family members and things come to me and say, hey, I don't like what's being taught in the public schools. I'm all in to homeschool my kid. And then at the last minute, they change their minds, put their kids back in school, and I don't hear from them for a long time. It's totally happened. <laughs> now, I don't say that to shame those people. I'm just saying, I'm just saying I understand a lot of us have had these experiences and I had a question recently in my Facebook group about what we should do as homeschool parents, as friends and family members of these people when that happens. So that's what I'm going to tackle today. And I'm going to, going to be speaking to you, the homeschool parent, not those people that put their kids back into school. I'm talking to the homeschool mom. So this is a little bit of a harder subject and we can't pretend that, that this doesn't happen because it does a lot. Actually, I would say more people who come to me and say they're going to homeschool end up not homeschooling than ones who actually do go through with it. So what is our role then? What do we do? Do we reach out to them? Do we offer support? What do we do? Well, obviously I am not going to be the type of person who's going to root for them to put their kids back in public school. I am not that way, <laughs> but there are things that I think we should be doing, especially as Christian women. First and foremost, we need to pray and have compassion on these people because there could be so many different reasons that we do not know or understand that fueled that decision for those people. So first, before you do anything, please pray. Please pray for them, pray for their kids because heaven only knows the things that they're going to be exposed to in the public school. Because if you are like me and you pay attention, it's getting worse year by year. Now what, now what do we do? You know, and some people are the type of people who would go and confront them. I don't really suggest that. That's not something that I suggest you do. I would not do that. That is not my approach and I'm going to explain why. But I'm going to leave that to the end. But first, here are some things that I think that you should be doing. So first I want you to remember that a lot of times these people are pressured. These women are extremely pressured by people around them. So think possibly their husbands, their parents, you know, people who are very influential to them, you know, especially more so than you those people are probably putting a lot of pressure on those women. And I know because I've felt it before. So, you know, and in my case wasn't even that bad. I had a pretty supportive family once they got used to the idea. But when you step out and do something against the norm, there's almost always gonna be some kind of pushback. The only exception to that rule when we're talking about homeschooling is people who were homeschooled who then continue on homeschooling. So we're making it more normal. Like I think the stigma is starting to go away thanks to the 2020 mess. You know, homeschooling has really ramped up in many places, but especially the United States. So it's becoming more of a normal thing. However, it's still not mainstream either. It's still kind of going against the system. And anytime you go against the system, there's always some kind of negative pushback. So just keep that in mind. The other reason a lot of people don't end up homeschooling or freaking out at the last minute and putting their kids back in is because they feel completely inadequate. So they come up to something that might be difficult you know, whether it's fractions or long division, and they kind of have this mental breakdown where they're like, I can't do this. I am not prepared for this. I am not a teacher. I'm going to fail my kids. And then they rush to put them back in the school system. It happens all the time, more so than you realize. So just know that there might be some major feelings of inadequacy, and then they have a lot of guilt for putting their kids back in. Also, their kids might be giving them a lot of grief about it. And this happens when you pull out older kids from the school system. I've seen and heard about it hundreds of times 
from different moms on the internet and on YouTube and people reaching out to me, it happens a lot with older kids, which is why it is a lot easier to pull out a younger child than it is an older child. But even when I pulled out my son when he was in third grade, there was a little bit of, I don't know, mom type of things going on there. Now, when you pull out a kid who might be in high school, they might totally rebel and then, you know, for the you know sanity of your family and for harmony and peace in your house, maybe that's why someone decided to put their kid back in and maybe they were praying about it constantly but they didn't know what else to do. I have seen this happen. I'm not saying that that's the decision that I would make, but maybe somebody else made that decision and I know people have done that. So just understand that there are things that going on that you probably don't see behind the scenes. Even if none of that is happening, even if everyone was supportive, even if they had all the tools, they had a friend like you who knew that they could do this, at the end of the day, some people just don't want to homeschool. They like the idea of homeschool, but the follow through that it requires work on their end is not something that they're willing to do. And I find that quite often, you know, people who, you know, were even were homeschooled who just decided, yeah, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with that. It happens. You know, at the end of the day, it's a lot easier to talk the talk than walk the walk. So there are people in that category as well. And I'm not calling anybody out here. I am not. I am just saying that this does happen and it is a thing. And honestly, a lot of the resistance to homeschooling in the world today is because people just don't want to deal with the workload that comes with homeschooling because it is work. It is a lot easier to get up early in the morning and send your kids off to school and then just have them come home with homework it's miles easier. The homeschooling road is not the easy road. It is the hard road. So, you know, a lot of people, they just don't want to do it. And, you know, even though we feel conviction to homeschool, that doesn't mean that everybody else does. And you cannot force people to homeschool. You just can't. So here's my advice. After you cover that family in prayer, and you ask the Lord what you need to do about it. I would choose words very wisely because there might be a lot of raw feelings around that issue and keep the line of communication between you and your friend or family member open because you never know, they may come back six months later and say, you know what, I've had it, <laughs> I'm done, I'm ready, I, you know, I punked out before, but I'm ready to do it now that might totally happen. And I've seen that happen. I've seen people kind of move back and forth and then, you know, finally something happens, whether it's, you know, some kind of major incident, some issue with the teacher, you know, there, there's hundreds of situations that could happen that just triggers that I am done type of thing. And that's their line in the sand and they decide we're ready. So, you want to have that line of communication open. If you go to them and, you know, start throwing accusations, why are you doing this? Don't you know what they teach at the schools? Not only is it going to really damage your relationship with that person, but then they might be even more resistant to homeschooling because they think that they're being judged. So be careful, choose your words wisely and just keep that line of communication open and just keep covering that family in prayer. That's really all you can do. At the end of the day, we cannot do anything else. We just have to keep steady on our own course. And sometimes we just have to mind our own business. <laughs> Even though, you know, we know how the great benefits of homeschooling, not everybody does, not everybody understands it, not everybody wants it. So we just need to do what we can do, be a light to these people and show them that there is another way. And when they're interested, they'll come to you. All right, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I will see you next time. Happy homeschooling.